No, it's still not working. It says, we work, it says it's working now, well, it's not getting there. Oh, uh, is he saying something? Um, Hello, well, so should we work on our end? Okay, so who is he? You Guys, can you hear us? Can you hear us? No? This is definitely recording. Oh, yeah, it's working. Yeah, One can the one in mm. now the speakers are working. I don't know how you check all that. Guys, can you hear us? I don't know if he's asking. Us can you hear us? On our, or can you hear on our end? Hello, yep, this is recording. Yeah, Sylvia? Yeah. yeah, okay. Oh, we can we can't hear on your end. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 I <laughs> like uh, We can't hear you. Uh, she said, "Good." She was like. Yeah. <laughs> I give this figure there. Like, not like like they're right there. Oh, we have done. Okay. Okay, we can hear you. Can hear you. Yeah. Can you yeah. hear us? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Awesome. So normally we have um, some cameras set up. But at the moment, our internet is not working. So we're actually going off the IT man's hotspot. Uh, so the cameras are not working. But if you want to see one of the girls can walk you around the courtroom, if that's what you wanted to have a look at, Mike. Oh, yeah. yeah. We sure do. Thank you. One of you just walk out. It's a bit, yeah. It's a bit of a <laughs> So that's our accused box on the side, which um, the, obviously the accused and the sheriff's office sit. And we've got our table where our judge's associate and clerk sit that record the court proceedings. So we have our witness box, and then obviously our judge's bench with our Finden High School logo behind instead of the South Australian coat of arms. And trying to just pull them a little bit closer to the. We then have our jury box. And then the final table is where our prosecutor and defence lawyer stand. And multiple cameras around the room to film. <laughs> Bring it back. Put it back. 
So we also have lots of video editing software, which was going to come into play today. And so we've got Shana and Jess in the middle, who are in the prosecutor or defence lawyer gowns. We also have some wigs, but they don't have them on because we weren't going to wear them because you guys don't wear wigs. One of you just want to put them on, so see. So in all our Australian courts, both prosecutor and defence lawyer wear wigs, which Jess is just getting. And then we've got Jen, who was going to play um, Anna Miles. No, Amelie Hodges. Hodges and Hannah, who was going to play Anna Miles. So Jess is just putting her very expensive horse hair wig on. Just turn around. So a cheap one of these costs $1,200 Australian. <laughs> Did you guys have any questions? How much did that cost to put together? Uh, the courtroom? Yeah. Yep, yeah, so if you can see behind these pink boards, you can't, but... My classroom is actually behind these pin boards. So it used to be two classrooms. So there was a wall here, uh -huh. which we knocked out. Um, and that costs about 15,000 to repaint and knock out the wall. Um, all the courtroom furniture, including the chairs, was about 12,000. Then the gowns, the robes and the wigs, I got fairly cheap for about four and a half thousand for five wigs, six jabbets, which is what this is, it's a jabbet. And then we have six robes. Because in our courtroom, um, we sometimes have two prosecutors, two defence lawyers. The judge needs a robe and the judge's associate needs a robe, but the judge's associate doesn't wear a wig. Wow, that's really impressive. And how much of that did you raise? Oh, and, sorry, and 10 grand for the IT. So we've got two TVs, some microphones, mixers, three video cameras, etc. Now, sorry, Mike, what was that last one? How much of that did you raise yourself? Uh, I raised basically pretty much 20,000. Wow. You, you should be congratulated. That is really, really impressive. Yeah, thanks, Mike. Oh, and a changeover of lights to LED ones instead of fluoros so that they're better on the eyes and obviously last longer. Wow. So we did that. The 20 grand came through. Um, I applied for quite a few grants and was successful in three. Um, and then we did two... You, Bunnings is um, like a hardware shop mm -hmm. and outside the hardware shop they do barbecues so you get lots of sales. So for example, on a weekday we made a thousand profit um, and on a weekend we made 1600 profit and then there was another hardware shop masters and we made basically 1900 profit. And then an election barbecue. So when we had our election, we had um, our school was a polling booth. And so we did a barbecue here and made, I think, about 1500 from that day as well. And a school barbecue as well. And how many students will go through your program? So this year I've had these eight year 11s because it wasn't up and running for the first semester. That's when I had the 30 kids. Mm -hmm. um, I've got 15 year 12s next year. Um, I've got a student coming from another school to do legal studies here because she wanted to be involved with the courtroom and they don't run legal studies at their school. Um, and then all of the year 10s and 9s will definitely get to use the courtroom. Year eight, I'm pretty reluctant at this stage, um, but we'll get to see it. 
We also do primary school visits. So last week, the last week? So two weeks ago, these guys um, had year five primary school students in and they did um, Little Red Riding Hood. No, Goldilocks. Goldilocks and the three bears. Yeah, so good. we prosecuted her for damage to property, theft, and break and entering. Yeah, I, I so like the, I like those fairy tale trials. Those are those are really good. How did it yeah. go for the primary school age kids? Yeah, so they they loved it. So it was twenty five, uh, sorry, twenty seven year five students. So my students did it first, and they sat in the jury and made the decision whether she was guilty or innocent. And then um, they got to try on all the wigs and the costumes and whatever in the middle. And then after lunch, those students got to do um, a little Goldilocks like a, a hearing themselves. So they. All of them apparently want to come here in two years. So that's good news for our school, but whether they do or not, but we were trying to get more schools to come in, you know, for those type of experiences, because as we said, <clears throat> or as I've said in email, there's no other school in South Australia that has a courtroom. Yeah. I, I imagine there's very few in the whole world, probably. Possibly, yeah. Yeah. It's, pro it's probably less than 40, I think, in the whole world that would have what you have. So that, that's really that's really amazing. Yeah, so the kids love it. And then the plan next year um, is to create a murder scene at the school. So <laughs> to, in to involve all faculties. So like, you know, the art department, the students in the art classes will make the dead body. Absolutely. And then, um, you know, the photography students can take the photos of the crime scene. Science can do, you know, the DNA testing of the blood or any evidence in terms of if there's any hair or animal uh -huh. um, fibres. Um, English will be, you know, doing write-ups because in Australia, I don't know about in America, but in Australia, um, if it's a high-profile case, the media sit in. Um, and there's always stories written about our high-profile cases. So our students in English would do similar to that. Also in design, they might be able to do um, sketches or caricatures of the um, defendant or the judge, which is quite common as well. So, and then obviously the IT with the video. So it's every single subject that we teach, we're looking to embed, you know, the, the courtroom or the legal process across... Um, at some stage and then obviously we'll prosecute whoever the accused is or whoever the accused are at this point it might have to be two people because I don't think one person would be able to keep a secret as to who allegedly did the murder that that's very very impressive uh we're sorry, we, we had a couple of people that were ill today, and so we couldn't make it, but uh, you guys are going out for your summer break this week, right? Or next week? Yeah, the year 11s, they've got two lessons left with me. Then they have exams, and then they're off until about the 27th of January. Wow. When they come back, or the 30th of January when they come back. So the year 11s and, and get a good break. The year 10s get about four days less. Then the year 9s and the year 8s get two weeks less. So they'll finish on the 16th of December and come back on the 30th of January. Wow. Now, is it just a grade 11 class or do they get to take it again next year? Yeah, so these, or well, most of these will do it next year um, so yeah I've got 15 so some from the first first semester that did it um, and then this semester as well because the timetable clashes this semester weren't as nice so students who were doing um, physics weren't able to do legal studies but some of those students are continuing with legal next year which is where the 15 comes from that that is very 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 impressive. I, I cannot. When I saw the video, it really looked nice, but it looks actually nicer in person. 
Now, do you want Shana to hold the laptop back so you can see your whole view of the courtroom in one go one shot? Yeah, that would be great. It's got all of it. What's your name? Uh, my name is Cam. Uh, uh, my name is Jason. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. This is Jennifer, Jess, Shana, and I'm Hannah. And then the boys are sitting in the background because they're too lazy to get up. I assume most of you want to be attorneys. Uh, not. Well, not necessarily. Shane has got possibly, Shane, just wave your hand again, um, possibly looking at law or something to do in the sciences. But, um, you know, it just helps with their public speaking as well and developing that not necessarily need to be involved or want to be a lawyer. Um, I think, Jess, you want to be a primary school teacher, don't you? Yeah. Um, but civics and citizenship, which is what this falls under in the junior curriculum, um, goes all the way down to primary school. So Jess could embed some of her knowledge, obviously on a much basic level, um, in the primary school when she gets in there. <laughs> um, but yeah, none of them are dying to be lawyers. Um, I do have a year 10 who is dying to be a lawyer. And I said, what's your backup? And he said, I don't need a backup, I'm gonna be a lawyer. <laughs> That's good. So he's uh, dead set on becoming a lawyer. Pam here wants to be a lawyer as well. Who does? Yeah. 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 And how long is law school in Texas? It's three years in Texas. Oh, yeah, go four years to get your bachelor's degree, your undergraduate, then three years in law school, so it's seven years altogether. How about yeah. in Australia? I think it's about six, six here. Yeah. Yeah, so I think it's about six years here. Um, but at the moment, there seems to be um, an issue like, there seems to be lots of lawyers and not a lot of jobs for them available at the moment. Yeah, that's, it's almost the same way here that the problem is that there's a lot of lawyers, but not necessarily a lot of good lawyers. Yeah. Uh, in our area, since we're the capital city of Texas and they do a lot of appeals and they do a lot of other things, uh, an attorney still has a pretty good chance of getting a, a you know, position. But in some parts, of, some parts of our country, you see lawyers doing uh, all kinds of other jobs because uh, about, I think, maybe a third of all the lawyers don't even practice law when they graduate from law school. All right. So they waste all that money on uh, uni fees and then don't even get to put that into place. Yeah. It's uh, very – how much does it cost to go to school in Australia? Um, in terms of uni? Yeah. Or actual school, yeah. Well, uh, it depends on what course it is. So, for example, what happened? Uh -oh. Okay. Uh, okay, this is perfect. I'm going to go to class. Do you have any Yeah. I think you can handle it from here. Oh, they said they're on the floor. Yeah. <laughs> You're going to make sure nothing happens to me on the walk to class. Thank you. 
Okay, if you turn the line way off too. Hello. I apologize. That was my fault. Hello. Yeah. Hello. I just I just went on mute. Sorry. No. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, well, um, I sent you an email. The battery laptop quickly went flat because we weren't expecting to use the laptop. But yeah. It, Students want to ask some questions about Trump. Wait, okay, yeah, yeah. Let me take a couple of pictures of the group and then you ask questions. The kid, the kids will be right back. They had to leave a second, but they'll be right back. But go ahead, ask. If you want to ask a question? Go ahead. What do you think of Trump? Well, the, uh, that's a good question. Actually speaking. Um, Mm, let's see. Since we're recording this, uh, that's a good uh, he might would do. There's a lot of protests right now, and uh, we we're actually trying to do a lesson about this. So I'll, I'll give you a, a little spiel. There are some people that try to do away with our electoral college, and our forefathers designed the electoral college so they could have broad support. And if you look at a map. In the United States, they had red and blue, red being what Trump won and blue being what Hillary Clinton won. Even though Hillary Clinton may have more popular votes, uh, about 90 some percent of the area voted for uh, Mr. Trump. Now, where we live here, it's pretty much a Hillary Clinton area. 
and uh, we had a uh, poll that we did with uh, 10 different schools all across the world and our school. And our school voted for Hillary Clinton and so did the country of Iran. So the, I don't know, that, that, was, that was weird, but in uh, an overall poll, more people vote for Trump. So I, I don't know what's the sudden. I guess well, time will tell. I would suspect that most of us would have been voting for Hillary. <laughs> yeah, uh, well, your, your, uh, your fellow uh, citizen, Jillian Assange, did a really good job in trying to take out Hillary Clinton. So, uh, or maybe you could say Hillary Clinton did a good job of taking herself out with uh, some of the stuff that came to Fort Light on uh, her emails. I, I, I really think uh, there were some flawed candidates, so it's very difficult to say. I uh, couldn't think of two more... I don't know if Hillary, if Hillary could have, uh, I don't, well, excuse me, if any, if any other Democrat ran against Trump, I think they might would have win, I won. And if any other Republican ran against Hillary, I think they could have won. So it was just two candidates that were just suited to only run against each other. And, you know, that, that's a very strange, uh, in politics, you don't really see that. If, if Trump actually did what he was going to do, we don't really see that either. He decided he doesn't want to take a salary. He may not live in the White House. Uh, he's doing some things that are not what a normal politician does. So that may not be bad. You know, what, what's happened here in the United States, which would be very similar to Australia, but you're at least a parliamentary uh, government, is that we develop a class of, uh, of a, a, an elitist type of group that stay in Washington forever. And they don't really think they have to be very responsive to the people. So every once in a while, the people get very, very upset and say, you know, things don't really work. I know that uh, your teacher had a, a child several years back, and she was on maternity leave, and you have wonderful health insurance stuff. In the United States, our health insurance changed with the Affordable Health Care Act, and our health care has gone astronomical. Uh, there are people working just and they get no salary at all just to pay for their health care. So this idea of health care is very serious in some of the states where Trump did really well, the health care is tripling that in, in this year. So it's it's gotten to be a very big issue. Do I eat or do I pay for my health care? So it, it's gotten very scary. And our colleges our colleges are just are uh, deadly. Uh, to go to college here for undergraduate, uh, you may remember Jacob. Uh, he used to debate for me. He's a sophomore in college now, but he's going to read college, and his tuition is like sixty-five thousand dollars a year. Uh, yeah, a year, a U.S. What's and, that for? What's he studying? Uh, I guess he's going to study pre-law. Yeah. And the the problem is some of our tuition. You know, you could literally a quarter of a million dollars what people borrow or put together and then they owe that. And then if you went to law school, you're probably talking about another 300,000. So you could be a half a million dollars in debt. And that would be, you know, I forget, you know, like uh, our houses are very expensive here in Austin, but it'd be like maybe two or three good, two or three nice house payments that you'd have for 30 years that you don't really get anything of it. So, um, it, it, it is a burden, and then uh, some of the politicians say, well, let's have free college. Well, you may not want free college. if you just, Now you just pay for yours. You don't have to pay for other people. And when I was going through school, it was so interesting that I could work part-time and pay for my college. My tuition was very low. I don't know what it is in Australia, but, you know, literally you could work. But today, these kids could not work in making good money because – you can't catch up. Yeah, well, my teaching degree for four years, um, granted it was like nearly 10 years ago, was about $25,000 for the whole four years. Yeah, and then that would be fairly reasonable. Now, today in Texas, that'd be about $25,000 a year for the average student. So you would be about $100,000 in debt. And then yeah. it, 
if you want to be a medical doctor or something, you're looking at probably total debt of a half a million dollars or better. A lawyer between three and four hundred thousand. Yeah, so our average housing here, I would say, is around three eighty four hundred for an average an average house. So you've got some selling quite easily in the six hundred to seven hundred thousand. Right. And we're not that far off. I, I think in Austin, you know, we're selling homes like a thousand square foot homes, very small for half a million. Where we're at in, in our area, um, it's a little less expensive because we're a little further out. We're about seven miles out. So I think our home is you know about one fit. We're about a hundred thousand dollar in that area, hundred two hundred thousand dollar homes. But uh, I don't know how people can just afford ha affordable housing is very hard for people to you know come about, and it, it almost requires you have two job. I mean, two people working, and then if you decide you don't really like your job, you have to kind of stay there anyways because you can't really afford to get another job. Do you have? Well, we've got something here called public trustee homes where if you are basically on the poverty line and you're either got a disability pension or a pension of some sort um, or you get Centrelink payments because you're unemployed and can't find work, some of those people are actually allocated basic housing right. generally for free. Now we've had, uh, we have a, a program called Section 8 where uh, they get heavily subsidized. So uh, house payment would be very similar to what you were saying, but yeah. you don't get a whole lot of selection. And uh, we have quite a few people like that in our school district. One of my former uh, students' family was in it uh, for a long time, and, and they had a pretty nice house. So I, I, we're, we have a very similar program. I just don't know how extensive it really is. I, I, I think we have a lot more people that could qualify the doubt. Our main problem now is we have a tremendous amount of people who are treated unfairly because they're not U.S. citizens. They came to our country without documentation. So we're having a tremendous um, uh, fight over, you know, the status of that. And I, I can't tell you the amount of students I've met or I've had actually that were uh, really, really nice kids, but they're their parents and themselves, they were not U.S. citizens, but then their, their younger brothers and sisters were. So it's a, it's a very uh, confluent. And right now, under that same Affordable Health Care Act, uh, if you're not a U.S. citizen, you cannot get student loans in the United States. You have to be U.S. citizens. So that's really limited uh, people on their occupations. Yeah, that is certainly, especially with considering the price that the your their uni fees are. Uh, by the way, when New Zealand had the earthquake the other day, did y'all feel anything there? No, nothing. No. So we've heard that two people um, had been killed, um, but the unfortunate thing is there was lots of looting happening. So people, when they were leaving, um, because they were told to evacuate, yeah, they went their homes, you know, there was one story that I heard, um, one of the one of the people was disabled and like a child and a $5,000, was either an ear, ear system or something to do with his hearing and they took that. So now that poor child, like $5,000 thing and then all of their, you know, the furniture that was good is now gone. Wow. What? Yeah, so, um, but no, we definitely didn't feel anything here. Well, I was going to ask about your elections that took place a while back. Uh, what did you think about your elections? Uh, well, personally, I wasn't, I, I'm a Labor voter um, because he, Labor, tend to be more for the working class and the families, whereas Liberal tend to be more for the rich. Um, and I would have to say that most of the students at our school would definitely not be in the rich category. Um, and so, for, you know, for our students and even, you know, for me and my family, in terms of what they're offering, offering in terms of childcare, it was much beneficial. But um, in South Australia, we generally voted for Labor. 
um, and Sydney, because they had a bigger population, um, they actually voted Liberal. Yeah, I, I, I didn't know what South Australia did. I, it's kind of unusual. Texas is very conservative normally, but yeah. when they when they uh, Trump uh, tar started talking about building a wall and uh, kind of generated a lot of uh, people to uh, to vote against him. Uh, here in Austin, it, it was probably about seventy percent for Hillary Clinton. So it's a it's it's very spotty here in Texas. It, uh, we had two hundred and I think 40 something, uh, two, well, I should know, 246 counties. That, that's probably wrong, but it's close to it. And Trump carried the vast majority of counties except for some of the real big cities. And the big cities, are, uh, it, it's going to be hard. Uh, you know, one of the things he wanted to do is put school choice on on the topic too, so he could people could not. In the United States, I don't know, is it, is, are your schools like Canada? Or is it like the United States more? Can you go to a private school or a public school and it doesn't cost you any money to go to private school? No, so you can, to go to private school, some of our private schools cost $3,000 a year. Okay. Some of them cost up to $40,000 a year, yeah. um, just for one year. Um, but if you, anyone can go to public school and if you're not able to afford like our school fees here, for our school, I think are only about four hundred dollars a year, um, and there are some families that um, their income doesn't even means that they don't have to pay any school fees whatsoever. So even though that's it's four hundred dollars, they don't pay anything. What, do, you, do you compete with the private schools where you're at in, in Finden? Are there private schools there too, or no? Yeah, there's a private school about 10 minutes from us. Oh, wow. um, And I would say it does disadvantage us a bit um, because we're, you know, our numbers are not great. We're only at about 300 and theirs would be well over 1,000. Um, but we've got four, four other public schools in the area that we're also competing with as well. So... Um, and one does a special sports program, one does a music program. So that's why I was hoping, you know, our courtroom would kind of be a niche for our school. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It, it would be a really, you know, it, there's no really motivation in the public schools here in the United States to do like that because, you know, well, there is, but I could see it more if it was a calling card and say, I, I'd like to go to Finden because we have this and this is available that you don't have at a private school. So you have... You have uh, uh, attractions for people that they wouldn't see at another school, correct? Yeah, yeah. Besides wonderful students and really nice teachers. <laughs> Thanks for that one. Um, but in terms of your electorates when they are voting, because although Hillary got more of the popular vote, so in Australia we have our electorates are based about geographical location. So they tend to make sure there's the same number of voters in each area. So, right. for example, we have the Port Adelaide Enfield, we have the Souls re electorate, we've got the Adelaide electorate, and they're divided up geographically, so they tend to have the same amount of voters so that it's an even vote. So if, you know, um, Labor win the seat there and Liberal win a seat in the other position in another area, there's still a amount the same amount of voters that have technically voted in those areas. Yeah, I think that the best way to describe the electoral college is very like parliament, is that you're running for, but just for each state. So whoever wins a state, and you know, that's how they get their votes. Or you're running for parliament, you're running for that one, uh, uh, the one person that's sitting in the house or whatever that, that, that you have. And then the total amount of votes are just total amount of votes, but they don't really count for anything. So I guess the Liberal Party may win in your particular jurisdiction, and they may be the member of Parliament, MP, but then those votes, total votes, Liberals could win and the other people could win, but then they, whoever has the most majority in the Parliament's one that is the, uh, uh, the Prime Minister, correct? Yeah. Yeah, it's very similar. I don't know. I guess we were so 
we were so uh, upset when we broke away from England that we decided to try to change something really goofy for some reason. Yeah, we now, in terms of our Prime Minister, the when we vote, which is actually, many people who are not educated in terms of, you know, the political system, believe they're actually voting for the Prime Minister. Yeah, we're, we're not. Voting, yeah, we're voting for the party. So we're either voting for Liberal or Labor or the Greens or the Democrats. But most people think, oh, well, you know, we've had quite a few Prime Ministers over the last, say, five or six years. And people go, well, you know, I didn't vote Tony Abbott in or I didn't vote Malcolm Turnbull in. That's not who I chose. And, you know, my response is, Absolutely not. You chose Liberal. This is your fault that we have these people in because, you know, you have chosen that party and the party choose who they put forward as the Prime Minister. Yeah, you know, uh, I was going to try to see if I got a couple of people. So we have some really big Trump supporters. We got two or three of them that we're actually going to uh, talk to that. And um, th there are some real positive reasons to try... In the United States, uh, there is a large amount of people who are very upset with um, a lot of businesses and stuff going overseas. So we've pretty much uh, become a, a society of disgruntled people, I'll put it that way. And, uh, you know, they want to try to get their jobs back. And I was explaining to some of my students, I, before I got into education, I worked at a steel mill, and it was out in East Texas, and we had uh 15,000 people working uh and then in July of one year they laid off 13,000 and then the next uh week they laid off another 1200 I was included in that bunch and then uh 30 uh 30 years later now well not by almost 30 years later they still only operate about 600 people so they never some of these things will never come back but there's still people waiting to get their job back, unfortunately. All right, do you guys have any more questions? Well, have a great day and have a good break. Thank you. They will. I'm sure they'll love it then. They can't wait for their sleep-ins. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Right, Thank bye. you. Bye. bye. <laughs>